Welcome to the uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the City Council for October 28th. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, item number one. Petition of CC Station Lofts, LLC, for garage license located at 124 Montello Street, Part 300, in City Clerk's Office, October 1, 2013. Hearing is signed for October 28, 2013. All paperwork is on file, and the Fire Department has no objections. Time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. For anyone here in favor, please step forward to the rostrum and give the clerk your name. Sure. My name is uh, Jason Korb, K-O-R-B. I'm the principal of Capstone Communities, LLC, the developer of the project. Um, I know there's a big game going on tonight, so I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, I have not appeared in front of this body as a whole. I think I've met with most of you individually. I thought it would be a great opportunity to give you a two-minute update on where the project is. As you know, this is what the building looked like about a year ago. Um, since then, uh, we've received funding from the state. Uh, the city has also contributed funding. We've been working really diligently uh, to complete the building by December 1st and occupy it by December 1st. Um, here, as you can see, is a, a picture of what it looks like today. I'm sure all of you have walked by it and seen it. Um, construction's been going great. We're ahead of schedule. Uh, we've leased uh, 14 of the workforce units have already been completely leased. Uh, we've leased uh, four or five of the market rate units uh, with four or five more uh, that we plan on taking deposits on in the next uh, probably one or two weeks. Uh, we have 25 units, so that pretty much uh, is the entire building. Uh, so we're doing very well. I think there is a strong market for both market rate housing and workforce housing. Um, all of the people uh, that we have so far have jobs. They work in the city. Um, I think there will be great people to have living in the downtown uh, and, and really contribute to the downtown. Here's just a, a picture of in the inside of one of the units on the fourth floor. Um, you can see that we actually preserved the original flooring. We were able to save about 85% of the flooring on floors two through uh, four. Uh, we've exposed beams, we've exposed columns, we've worked with the National Park Service uh, to really bring out the history of the building. The windows actually are precise matches of the historic windows as well. Um, there was a long process that we went through. We, we repointed 100% of the building. I think if you walk by it though, you'd see that none of it looks like new mortar. Um, we, we spent a lot of time working on making sure that it was appropriate for the building. Just a picture of the model unit that you can see. And I invite any of you to come by. Uh, I know some people are going to be taking a walking tour tomorrow. Um, you're absolutely welcome to join us, and I'd be happy to take you through the building. So we're here today because of the garage, though, specifically. Um, the garage is located uh, on the other side facing the railroad tracks. It was the one-story office building that you'd probably seen. We were required to keep it by the Park Service because it is a historic building and we thought providing covered parking would be a great amenity uh, to the building. So we are required uh, by Mass State Law to be here and request a, a approval from you. The garage will be well lit. Uh, there will be a security camera in the garage. There will be mechanical ventilation in the garage as well uh, that will go on when carbon monoxide hits a certain level uh, as required by law. The fire, we've been working with the fire department, the plumbing inspector, to make sure that it's up, up to code. Um, you, have a plan in, you have a plan in front of you. Uh, this is actually slightly different than the one you have in front of you. If it's okay, I'd like to submit this updated plan. It's the same number of parking spaces. Uh, we discovered a column. We should have known this before I submitted it, but we didn't. Um, a column in this location over here. This is, by the way, to orient you. This is Lincoln Street. This is West Railroad Avenue up here. Uh, we originally had a space over here in bike racks over here. We've moved the bike rack. We've swapped this parking space with the bike rack um, because of this column location here. So cars wouldn't be able to maneuver into the space. We still have the same dimensions that are required under the zoning code. Uh, we just moved this parking space across. So I do have copies of the revised plan. I don't know if that's something that you'd like to see. I, you could give them to the clerk, please. Okay, sure. Um, I also do have the abutter notifications as well as required. Um, with the return receipts, so I can submit those too. Okay, great. You could just give them to my clerk here. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President, sorry. 
Good evening, Jason. Uh, it sounds like you've done a, a marvelous job. I mean, you're, you're ahead of schedule. And you're, you're, the building is, gonna be, is fully rented, right? That's our hope. Great yeah. job. And tomorrow, uh, the governor's coming. We'll have a, a grand tour of uh, your building with the project going across the street also. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, congratulations, and we'll, we'll get this uh, garage license for you so you can get all those automobiles in there and get the people in there, and we'll... We'll have a we'll have a grand opening party, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you. Great. I mean, thank you for your support as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you've done a marvel, 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 marvelous job. I commend you for that. Thank you, yeah. Mr. President. Thank you. Councilor Brophy. Thank you. Now, was the parking... Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, the parking garage, was that part, originally part of the plan, or was that a, 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 another use originally? Um, it's always been a part of the plan. We originally actually proposed to have two holes in the garage to provide for ventilation. Um, the plumbing code actually specifically states that the openings of an open garage, we intended to have an open garage, had to be the walls and not the ceiling. So the only change to the garage was that we filled in the holes in the roof, okay. um, which actually provides for a better garage. And then we added mechanical ventilation. So How much on-site parking do you have now with, with the garage and with the other spaces on the property? Good, good question. So we have 27 on-site spaces, 25 units. We also are required to lease six spaces on the street on West Railroad Avenue. So we have a total of 33 parking spaces. And that's through the parking authority, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Council Sullivan. <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Corb, uh, good evening. Thank you for coming tonight. And uh, thank you for investing in Brockton. Um, one of the questions I had, Jason, um, I've supported you since day one. And I know when we first had a private meeting to get familiar with the, with the project, you indicated that on the first floor you were going to do some type of historic sports memorabilia, Stall and Dean motif. Is that still? Yeah, I'm actually really glad you've asked that. Um, with me tonight actually is Lachlan McKinnon. Lachlan is uh, from, with the Boston Architectural Center. We've hired Lachlan to find historic memorabilia. Awesome. And Lachlan's actually found a lot of things. Um, people have donated historic memorabilia. He's talked to Jim Benson. He's talked to... Uh, other people have donated uh, items in the city. We've actually created a, a waiver. Um, so if people would like to loan things to us, they don't want to give it to us. They'd like to loan it to us for, you know, four days or four years or 40 years. They can do that. And whenever they'd like to have it back, they'll be giving it back. Um, awesome. We're talking to Chick Knight as well to try to find more memorabilia. We've uh, saved an old sign as well that we found in the building. Unfortunately, there was not a lot left in the building. Um, but I'd actually like to use this opportunity to speak to everybody here as well as people on TV to say, you know, if you do have things, we'd love to be able to borrow them or buy them or display them. It's very, very important to us. Excellent. And it's yeah. still going to be in the lobby area? It's actually going to be throughout the whole building. Oh, it is? So we Great found, idea. so Lachlan has found um, images of Brockton. So it will not just be about the building itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we found old, old images of Brockton, Brockton High of uh, the downtown during Christmas. And we're actually going to blow all of those up and frame them and put them in the building. That's neat. So, great. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank yeah, you. Anybody has any ideas, too, we're happy to, you know, hear them. So, great. Yeah, Thank you very question. much. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. And I'm sure if you have lunch at Petty's Market, you'll find some. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Stewart. Some Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Mr. Corp. It's good to see you here. Congratulations on just a fantastic project. It's been great working with you. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm in Boston tomorrow, so I will not be a part of the tour. I would love to set something out with you as, a, as a, an aside. Um, I have a question about your marketing. I know you had sent out uh, a marketing document, if I remember correctly, some time ago, um, if, I, if I remember correctly. But can you just talk through what was your marketing strategy to get your building <laughs> occupied so quickly? Sure. Um, so the, the number one uh, uh, marketing technique that we used were the banners, actually. I think something like 55 to 60 percent of people calling us or emailing us came directly from the banners. So we have a banner positioned facing the railroad, uh, the railroad tracks. Um, so that's been fantastic. Also Montello Street, there's a lot of traffic. We've dropped off flyers at the health center, at the YMCA, at the mayor's office. Um, we've advertised in minority newspapers and bilingual newspapers. Um, we've really tried to make an effort to hit as many different populations as we possibly can as well. Um, I think we've advertised in the Enterprise. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, there was an article written, though, uh, that we worked with the Enterprise on to try to get the word out. Um, so everybody actually who's applied to live in the building is from Brockton um, that we've accepted. Uh, we had a lottery as well that uh, I believe we had about 700 applications in the lottery for the 14 workforce units. Um, most of the people out of that lottery 
were from Brockton, actually, that That's we great. accepted. Uh, and then uh, any future plans for additional development in, in the city? I would love to develop again in the city. Um, I'm currently looking for a project, so um, I haven't found one yet. I love historic restoration, rehabilitation. Um, so again, if you have, I'd, I'd love to continue building on the relationships I have here. So That's great. Well, again, thank you. Yeah. thank you for your work. And, thank you, uh, and thank you for your support. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there anyone else here in favor of the uh, project, the uh, garage license? Seeing none, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition to the garage license? Seeing none, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Questions, Questions on granting. Questions on granting by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Roll. Yes. Approved. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. 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 The garage is gra license is granted. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Mr. President. Item number two. We have the petition of General Realty Trust for a garage license located at 10 Pickham <coughs> Street in City Clerk's Office, August 1st, 2013. Hearing assigned for August 28, 2013. All paper necessary paperwork on file. Fire Department has no objections. Time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. For anyone here in favor, please step forward to the rostrum and give your name to the clerk. Hi, my name is John Rudnicki. I'm co-owner of General Realty Trust. We purchased property uh, on 10 Pinkham Street right around in, it was April. The property was kind of uh, vacant for two to three years. It was completely rehabbed inside uh, wiring, doors, paint offices. Uh, we had it all taken care of. Uh, currently, it can park about 28 cars. It's only 4,000 square feet. It's right across the street from Cape Cod Cafe. Um, it's all new heat. Everything else is put in it. Councilor Stadensky. I'm open for questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Sir, I'm the Ward 4 Councilor. I met with people who plan on running a business here, and you were neither of them. Are they here anywhere? The people that are going to they're leasing it? Yeah. They were supposed to be here. Okay, I have stipulations that they, that they have to agree to. We have to work on this. And, uh, I spoke to them by phone. I, I would ask that we move this to the end of tonight's meeting and give them a chance to get here. I can't close the hearing, right? <clears throat> close the hearing. Motion made and seconded to continue the hearing to the end of the meeting. All those in favor? Opposed? We'll continue this at the end of the meeting. Hopefully they'll be here. Item number three. <coughs> Petition of General Realty Trust for a garage license located at 967 Montella Street in Clerk's Office, July 22, 2013. Hearing is signed for October 28, 2013. All the necessary paperwork is on file, and the fire department has <coughs> no objections. Time having arrived, I'll declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? Please give your name to the clerk. My name is John Renicki, uh, co-owner of General Realty Trust on uh, 967 Montello Street. We just recently purchased that building too uh, and cleaned it up, cleaned up the whole area. Uh, we are currently going to be changing tenants in the building. There's a, uh, the old tenants that were in the building when we bought it are still there. Uh, but we're kind of, we want to be getting new tenants. It's going to be a three unit, uh, three separate units for three different businesses. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Are you here for one license? Two. No, no, for one license at 967. Correct. We're past one 10 license. Pinkham. One license. You're here for one license, yep. and there are going to be three different businesses in there. Correct. And are any, any of those people, have you had contact with any of them? Yeah, we just signed the leases with, that, with those people. I'm afraid, I'm afraid I was unable to meet with. Uh, I had no knowledge of this particular one at all. I'd, I'd make a motion this time to move this to the next regular council meeting, and I will give these gentlemen the, my card so they can give them to their lessees and they can meet with me so we can run Second. things properly. Could we do both of them uh, next time? Yeah, might as well. Uh, the motion right now is to, uh, motion is made and seconded to continue this hearing to the next city council meeting. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? This will be continued to the next city council meeting. Uh, would you like to counsel on item number two? Well, at the end of the meeting, we'll have to reopen that hearing. 
Item number uh, number four, please. <coughs> yeah, we will at the end. Clerk, item number four. Petition of Chick to Chick, DBA, Chick to Charity for a secondhand articles license at 21 Tory Street. I'm having arrived at the hearing. I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? Please come forward. Give your name and address to the clerk, please. Uh, Dwayne Williams, Sheik to Sheik, address 1 Whittier Lane, Easton. This is Janelle Palumba, also 1 Whittier Lane, Easton. And you, you are uh, seeking a secondhand license for 21 Tory Street? Correct. We currently have a secondhand articles license at 165 Westgate Drive. It is a 3,000 square foot. Uh, Secondhand clothing store next to Warren Jewelers and Lowe's behind Market Basket. We signed a one year lease. We moved in the beginning of January. Our lease is up December 31st. Um, that current location was an old Papaginos. It's 3,000 square feet. Um, what we learned in the first month or two months of being open is that we didn't have enough space to meet the demand for the secondhand clothes. Uh, currently, our Brockton location only uh, sells women's clothing, shoes, handbags, and jewelry. We have another location in Stoughton, which does have men's clothing and children's clothing in addition to the uh, women's clothing. So our goal is to enlarge the space, uh, which obviously we can't do at that location. So we've signed a lease um, at 21 Torrey Street in Brockton right next to Lens Crafters and Price Right in the same plaza as Ocean State Job Lot. That location is 9,600 square feet, so our goal is to um, meet the demand of the local market to have men's, women's, and children's clothing together. Um, so what we are proposing is to, um, according to the city clerk, turn in our license as the license is specific to a location. So we want to turn in our license at 165 Westgate Drive and apply for a new license at 21 Torrey Street in Brockton for the same purposes. Thank you, sir. Councilor Cruz. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I just uh, I hadn't had any contact from you, and you at least answered one question. So 21 Torrey Street is the uh, Ocean State job lot? It's the same plaza. It's Points West Plaza. The space we're looking at used to be Lappin's Auto Parts. Um, it's on the corner of uh, Torrey and West Street, so it has the green and white awnings. Um, I believe it's facing Dunkin' Donuts. Um, it actually faces Our Lady of Lord's Church. Okay. Uh, and what kind of hours do you operate? Our hours are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, 12 to 5 on Sunday. 12 to 5 on Sunday, because uh, there is, you'll have a little overlap uh, with uh, Our Lady of Lord's Church, and I know that uh, um, on Sunday. And what time on Saturday? 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, our, our current hours in Brockton and Stoughton. Uh, okay, um, and you're in currently how many square feet? We're in 3,000 square feet at 165 Westgate Drive, so we'd be moving to 9,600. And where do most of these secondhand articles come from? Um, they all come from our consignment store in Foxborough. We have a um, consignment store in Foxborough, and we allow the people dropping off their clothing. Um, if there's something that we can't accept for consignment, we give them the option to be sold in one of our two charity stores in Brockton or Stoughton. Um, in exchange for people donating their clothing to the store, um, this year we've donated a little over $20,000 to local charities. Each month uh, we donate money to a local charity based on the volume of donations. Our first month in operation we donated to Penelope's Place, which is a domestic violence shelter in Brockton. We've also donated money to the Brockton Boys and Girls Club, as well as the YMCA and a number of different local charities, food pantries. And did you say that people dropped the clothes off there? Or? It's all dropped off in Foxborough. We in Foxborough. There is no drop off at this location? Um, no. We don't, we don't get donations in Brockton, to be honest. Okay. We uh, are getting a few in Stoughton. Okay. We, we I mean, had, I actually, I'm looking, I'm looking that there isn't because we've had issues with some of the bins and all around. I mean, that's what. We don't get any in Brockton. Yeah, we've. So. 
you know, we, um, would, we have accepted maybe two or three people have said, can I give you some clothes? We, we say, ah, sh sure, thank you, but I think that's only happened maybe literally two to three times. But you have no setup for people to be no. dropping things no. off, because my fear is that people then just leave it outside. No, no, no we, we don't. The, the, what separates us from uh, a typical, um, like a Sabres or Salvation Arm is we're not, getting clothing from metal donation bins outside that are left out in the rain and the snow. 100% of the clothes that we receive are clean, washed, folded, brought into us. Our current consignment list in Foxborough is about 8,500 people that primarily live Foxborough, Easton, Sharon, Canton, Plainville, the town surrounding our store in so Foxborough. So you don't really consider yourself a thrift store like the Salvation Army building we're, at the we're not. We're not collecting, we're not buying clothes out of donation bins like a, a savers. They purchase clothes from donation bins. If we do not any, purchase clothes. Yeah, if it has any stains, if it has any odors, smoke damage, anything like that, it, we I give it to Planet Aid. To give it to Planet Aid to yeah. It. yeah, we have okay. plan, right. we set up with Planet Aid to anything that <coughs> we feel um, doesn't meet our standards, we um, donate to Planet Aid. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Um, how, how, as part of your lease, how many parking spaces do you have there? Because that's a pretty, I know it because uh, I'm a communicant of a lady of Lords, and I know there's a, a lot of parking on that side. It's also a former Japanese steakhouse that's been converted now. I think it's going to be a Jamaican restaurant as well there. So how many, how many parking spaces do you get under your lease? We're, we're running out of parking. No, I mean when you yeah, go to, I don't, you go to I don't know the exact number. Um, the landlord is Bricksmore Properties. Yep. Um, there's <coughs> obviously there's at least 30 parking spaces in front, and then of course on the other side by Price Right and Job Lot, there's obviously several hundred spaces over there. But directly in front of the space we're leasing, there's at least 30 spaces there. Okay, because I do know on Sunday a lot of people, specifically the seniors and the elders that go to church, they they park on that side because it's closer to walk to the church okay. across the street. So, just FYI on that. But I I know for a fact you've done well at the Westgate, um, and I would expect you're going to do well in Tory as well. Um, so I appreciate you coming before us. And Mr. Cruz is the Ward 1 counselor, and that's located yep. in Ward 1. Okay? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Counselor. <coughs> anyone else in favor? Please come forward. Give your name and address to the clerk. Anyone else in favor? Seeing anyone else in favor, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. Is there anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in opposition? Please come forward. Give your name and address to the clerk. Seeing no one in uh, opposition, I declare that portion of the hearing closed. The question is on granting the, uh, the uh, secondhand uh, article license by a roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Brophy? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Stampler? Yes. Dubois? Yes. Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Eddie? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Stavinsky? No. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative, one in the negative. The uh, license is approved. Okay. You're all set. <clears throat> Report of the Ordinance Committee for its meeting of October 21st, 2013. Accepted and placed on file. Report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of October 21st, 2013. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Mayor recommending an appropriation for unappropriated estimated receipts for the General Fund, $50,000 to General Fund Revenue Subsidy of the Park Recreation Enterprise Fund and from unappropriated revenues of Park Recreation Enterprise, $50,000, to Park Recreation Enterprise Personal Services other than overtime. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommending an appropriation in the amount of $4,500 from unappropriated estimate receipts to Auditor's Office Fund <clears throat> deficient recovery in order to provide funding to eliminate minor deficits and several special revenue <clears throat> funds prior to setting the tax rate. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor recommended an appropriation in the amount of $1,900,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts to stabilization fund. <clears throat> Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending an appropriation in the amount of $300,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts of the water fund to the stabilization fund. 
Uh, accepted and placed on file. Application from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the city auditor certifying that the balance of the ambulance receipts reserved for appropriations as of October 9, 2013 is $300,592.87. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the chief of the fire department <coughs> requesting a total transfer of $207,180 from ambulance receipts account to department equipment for one, a request for $157,180 for the second phase of the fire department computer aided dispatch system, which will be integrated with the present police computer aid the dispatch system, and two, a request for $50,000 to be used to purchase a new incident command vehicle for the platoon deputy chief. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Application from the mayor recommending that the city council authorize the <coughs> approval of a solar net metery credit agreement between 126 Grove Solar LLC and the city of Brockton. This agreement is for the purchase of solar power from Solar Plain plan which will save the city in electricity costs. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have an order of an appropriation of $151,419.70 from the Mass Executive Office of Public Safety and Security 911 Department Training Grant and an EMD regulatory compliance grant, the City of Brockton Police Department State 911 Training Grant and EMD regulatory compliance grant fund. In Council <coughs> October 15, 2013, ready to the Standing Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Profi. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Martin. Yes. Petty. Yes. 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 The order is adopted. An appropriation of $5,187.70 from the Mass Association of Health Boards, Plymouth County Region 5 Emergency Coalition Grant Fund, the City of Brockton Board of Health, Mass Medical Reserve Corp Grant Fund. In Council October 15, 2013, refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. 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 Monahan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Sedinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. The order is adopted. Appropriation of an additional $182,910 from the Commonwealth of Mass Executive Office of Health and Human Services Safe and Successful Youth Initiative Grant to the Office of the Mayor Safe and Successful Youth Initiative Grant Fund. In Council, October 15, 2013, we refer to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. The question is on ado adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Rofi. Yes. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy. The order is adopted. The order that the City Council hereby accepts as a granted gift from the Brockton <coughs> Library Foundation in the amount of $50,000 for improvements to the West Branch Library located at 540 Forest Avenue, Brockton, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Subsection 53A, in Council October 15, 2013, referred to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. The question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Squire. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. yes. Sullivan. Yes. And in the the Mr. President, adopted. Councilor Ian Erie. President, I move for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail on item number 24. Second, second. Second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration. All those opposed. Reconsideration fails. Order that the city enter an agreement attached hereto with the Mass Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development and accept therefrom a grant in the amount of $11,066,361 as part of the Commonwealth Growth Destructive Initiative, established pursuant to 11 of Chapter 238 of the Acts of 2012 for the purpose of funding the second phase of an economic development project within the block of land in downtown Brockton, <coughs> Mass., bound by Center Street, Montello Street, Main Street, and Petronelli Way. In Council October 15th, referred to the Committee on Finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? 
Brophy. No. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Ranieri. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Nine in the affirmative, one in the negative. The order is adopted. Resolved that the mayor. Councilor uh, Dinapoli. Thank you, Mr. President. Move for reconsideration in hopes it doesn't prevail on item number 25. Second. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration in the hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration, all those opposed. Reconsideration fails. Resolved that the mayor, chief financial officer, and superintendent of buildings be invited to appear before a committee of this council to discuss the condition of city buildings and properties and to discuss the establishment of a long-term plan for maintaining such properties. In council, October 15, 2013, refer to the committee on finance. That report is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ralphie. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Enemy opinion. The order is adopted. Resolved that the DPW Commissioner and a representative from the city's outside electrical service company come before the Finance Committee to discuss and outline the repair, replacement, and installation process relative to the streetlights located within the city. In Council October 15, 2013, referred the Committee <coughs> on Finance. That report is favorable. Mr. Question. President. Councilor Sullivan. If I could, uh, just, uh, just to remind my colleagues on the Council, last week when uh, representatives from the city were here, they indicated dollar amounts to install um, new lights within the city of up to $1,300. Um, I think the range was $700 on the low, $1,300 on the high. I'm going to ask for uh, proof of that. Uh, reason being is I know for a fact another local municipality that did the streetlight acquisition is only paying $200 to $300 to add a, a light per pole. So I'd like to see a cost analysis and a breakdown on that. So I just wanted to inform you that I will be requesting that through you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. <coughs> yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. And in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Resolved that the building commissioner and the supervisor of the Animal Control Department come before the Finance Committee to discuss the condition of the Animal Control Building located at 446 Court Street in Council October 15, 2013. Refer to the Committee on Finance. That report <coughs> is favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Dubois. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Kennedy. The order is adopted. Councillor Ian Erie. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> I'm right here. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 Councillor Dinapoli. Are you trying to move me onto the west side, Councillor, Mr. President? Okay. I'd like to move <laughs> item number 29 <laughs> under, the, uh, under suspension of rules and act on this tonight in uh, De uh, Deputy uh, Chief Williams is here tonight if uh, anybody has any questions second. on this. Second. Motion is made and seconded to take item 29 tonight and act on the suspension of the rules. All those in favor? Opposed? We will act on number 29 after the clerk reads it. An appropriation totaling $207,180 from Ambulance Receipts Fund to Fire Department Capital Department Equipment, $157,180 for the second phase of the fire department computer-aided dispatch system, which will be integrated with the present police computer-aided dispatch system, and from the ambulance receipts fund to fire department capital department equipment, $50,000, to be used for the purchase of a new incident command vehicle for the platoon deputy chief, though they will be sharing some of the same components and hardware, they will still have their own separate dispatching software. We have a letter from the Chief Financial Officer stating that this evening Deputy Chief <clears throat> Williams has indicated that he will request that the City Council suspend the rules to approve in one evening the request to appropriate $207,180 from the Ambulance Receipts Fund to purchase a command vehicle in the second phase of the computer-aided dispatch system. The reason for this request is to accelerate the acquisition of this equipment. 
uh, it has been, uh, the CFO has provided certification for the appropriation and does not object to the adoption of the appropriation. In one meeting, respectfully submitted, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, Council, uh, Chief Francis is out of town this evening, and we have Acting uh, Chief uh, Williams here and Deputy Vice Chief Galligan. If you have any questions, you may remain seated, Councilors. Councilor Brophy. Thank you. Chief, how are you? Good evening, Council. Um, could you explain uh, what the new incident command vehicle, what, what the purpose of it is and, sure. and the um, reason for it? The vehicle that we presently use is a 2004 Ford Expedition. Uh, obviously, it was put into service, uh, I believe, in December of 2003, bringing that close to 10 years old. It's really starting to show its age as far as maintenance and repairs. Uh, those costs are starting to, to build. Um, with the new computer system, it would also allow us to add this computer system into the new vehicle instead of putting it into an old one and having to move it at a later date. Um, it's really time to replace this vehicle. Just could you explain the, the, the part of the order? Uh, they, will have, they will be sharing some of the same components and hardware uh, they will have with their, with their own separate dispatching software. What does that mean? That aspect uh, of the computer-aided dispatch system is being handled by Deputy Chief Galligan, who is also here. Maybe he could answer that question a little bit better for you. Good evening, evening Councillors. Uh, what we're proposing is to install the same software that the police are using for their computer-aided dispatch system, uh, file records management, personnel management system. So we'll have identical systems in the police and fire departments, which will allow us in the future to integrate those systems uh, should that become a, a desire of the police and fire chief, which is uh, under discussions right now between the police and fire chief. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. President. Any recommendation? Motion to approve. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded to, uh, to approve this evening. Questions on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Brophy. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Benefra. Yes. Wow. Yes. Pioneer. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Petty. Yes. <coughs> yes. Stadinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Councillor DiNapoli. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to uh, file for uh, uh, reconsideration. Reconsideration. Reconsideration in hopes it doesn't prevail. Second. Second that one. That's Maybe I should have called on the engineer. <laughs> Motion <laughs> made and seconded uh, for reconsideration that hopes it does not prevail. All those in favor of reconsideration, all those opposed, reconsideration fails. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Order of appropriation of $4,500 from unappropriate estimate receipts to Auditor's Office Fund Efficient Recovery. Refer to Finance. Appropriation $300,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts to the Water Fund to the stipula uh, Stabilization Fund. Refer to finance. On an appropriation of $1,900,000 for unappropriate estimate receipts to the stabilization fund. Refer to finance. An appropriation totaling $100,000 from unappropriated estimate receipts of the general fund to general funds re revenue subsidy of the parks, recreation, enterprise fund, $50,000, and from unappropriated revenues of the park recreation enterprise to park recreation enterprise personal services other than overtime, $50,000. Refer to finance. Ordered that the City Council authorize the approval of the solar net metering credit agreement between 126 Grove Solar LLC and the City of Brockton, a copy of which is attached here too. This agreement is for the purchase of solar power from a solar plant which will save the city in electricity costs. Refer to finance. Mr. President? Uh, just before you... I'm sorry. We have a moment of personal privilege. Uh, I wanted to do a late file. Uh, but I can wait until... If you just have at this else point, uh, item number two, uh, hearing was postponed until the end of the meeting. At this point, I did say a motion to... Uh, postpone that hearing till the next finance, I mean, next council meeting. So moved. Second. Motion made to second to postpone the hearing for uh, General Realty Trust Garage License at 10 Pinkham Street to the next uh, city council meeting. All those in favor? Opposed? That is transfer. Uh, postponed. Mr. President. Councilor Dubois. At this time, I'd like to put forward a late file resolve, if I could have a second. Second. Motion made to second for a late file resolve. All those in favor? Opposed? So uh, does the clerk have it or do you have it? I have it. I'll read it. 
Um, resolved, certain city department employees are required to enter the private homes of city residents to provide public safety services or utility services. The citizens of Brockton must be given reasonable assurances that the city is doing all it can to ensure that the employees it sends into their homes are trustworthy. The city must be diligent to maintain policies that are open and accessible to the public with regard to its handling of employees who have been arrested or charged with violent crime or drug offenses while maintaining the individual employee's right to privacy. This is especially important with regards to employees who are trusted with access into homes of citizens. The following department managers are invited to appear before the City Council to provide an overview of their department's policies and past practices with relation to city employees arrested or charged with violent crimes or drug offenses. Please forward any and all departmental and city policies with relation to these issues to the City Council. Questions to be asked and answered include, does the city or do the departments place staff members who interact with the public in private settings such as in a resident's home on administrative leave during adjudication of violent crime charges and drug trafficking offenses? Do departments assign alternative work duties for staff members charged with violent crimes or drug offenses which remove the staff member from intimate settings with residents until these offenses are adjudicated. <clears throat> if found guilty of a violent crime or drug offense, what are the city's policies for terminating employment? Invited Director of Personnel, Maureen Cruz, Chief of Police, Manuel Gomes, Chief of Fire Department, Richard Francis, and Superintendent of Utilities, Larry, Larry Rowley. I'm putting forward this tonight. Um, I've gotten several telephone calls from set citizens that are nervous about um, city employees coming into their homes after the most recent arrest of a city employee for, um, put, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's true or not, but he's being, he was arrested for rape um, in the city. So I tried to get information on what was, how that was being handled and if there were any policies that the city implemented that were open to, um, to look at and I was not given that information. So I'm putting it forward tonight. So. Um, the citizens at home can hear firsthand that our city and is being managed by people that care about their safety, which I think will be happy with the responses. But just to be open, that's why I'm filing this resolve. Thank you. Refer to finance. Uh, President. Council Sullivan. Moment of personal privilege. You may. I want to keep my tradition alive. I've been doing it for eight years. As we uh, remind all registered voters in the city of Brockton, next Tuesday is the general election here in the city of Brockton. Again, it's a uh, nonpartisan election. If you're a registered voter, you can go out to the polls. They're open 7 a.m. and they close at 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Councillor, due to the uh, fact that next Tuesday is uh, election day, there will be no finance meeting next Monday evening. Uh, any other business? I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege myself to wish my bride at home, Donna, a happy birthday. Hey. Yay! Don't be in trouble for that. Go Sox. And uh, go Sox. We're adjourned. <laughs> Any score?